Well, my name is Dan Petrock, and I'm from Des Moines Area Community College, and I'm a member of the Innovation Teaching Learning Committee, so thank you all for being here. Uh, tonight, I'm going to talk to you about Games to Learn Math. This has been a personal and professional passion of mine for the last several years, and uh, I think it actually fits well in the theme of using technology to free our classes to do really deep level math. So, here we go. A game has four things. A goal, a rule, feedback, and voluntary response. So my question to you is, does math have goals? Yeah? Does it have rules? Of course. Does it have a feedback system? Well, eventually we'll tell them right or wrong, or somebody else will have a homework system. But how about voluntary participation? <laughs> we're so close, right? You have three out of the four for a game here. So, so what we're missing is this last component, engaging and motivating students, right? So I'm like, what if we can make a game that actually fills that fourth thing? And then we got it, right? So, if, um, when we're looking at game-based learning, Rath Kosterzeka has got a great book called The Theory of Fun. Fun in games arises out of mastery. It arises out of comprehension. It's the act of solving puzzles that makes games fun. With games, learning becomes the drug. Have we all experienced this? Okay? And we know this, right? So, game designers try to do this thing. They try to balance skill with challenge to get this nice thing called flow. We do this in our classrooms every day, don't we? But the problem is, where's everybody out? Everybody's got their own flow channel. Nobody's got the same flow channel. So how do we design something that optimizes that? We want desirable difficulty for every student, don't we? We want to individualize that, and we want them to make errors so we know we're hitting them in the flow. The problem is, this becomes very uncomfortable in class, but it's very natural in a game. So what we're going for here is called hard fun. We want things that are mentally demanding, that get the instant feedback, and then the game mechanic will give them that loop, that feedback loop. And all of a sudden, we've got flow, right? And if it's fun enough, we start feeling dopamine in our brains being released when you're learning in flow, a.k.a. fun, okay? So when you're learning in flow, you are having fun. Your brain is loving this. So this user right here looks a little young, right? But the reality is the average gamer in the United States is 37 years old and 47% are females. So this is a big, broad range of users. So all these diverse, this diverse learners, we can help them with remediation, individualized instruction, and we can optimize that through this flow channel, right? We can design something that acts to help them learn within flow and, heck, they're having fun. And a lot of the stuff we do right now actually fits well. A lot of the skills we're doing, procedures, fits well. So there's goals, there's rules, there's feedback we can give them. And if we can fit this into a dynamic that's engaging, all of a sudden, we're having fun, right? So, the key here is we want them to experience mathematics. We do this in our classes, right? We experience math. We also can do this in a game. And when we're experiencing it, well, the next step is to what? We try to figure out what's going on, what's right, what's wrong, and we want to make a hypothesis about that. And we get this feedback loop that's telling me, wow, that worked and that didn't. And we're trying to figure out what's right. When the brain craves these patterns. It cannot not do this, right? It wants to know what's going on. And when they're trying to fit this into the schema, this is where we can come in. We can help them formalize this. They can talk to others. Social constructivist theory would say that, right? We want to formalize the experience they're having within this game. And all of a sudden, we're doing math. So if we can help them, uh, the goal here is to have deep procedural and deep conceptual understanding, right? I think games are a key component that we can bring into our classrooms to do that. They can help that deep procedural. It'll get it quick. We'll have mental math skills that are fast, right? But then we can formalize that in classes while well deep conceptual and deep procedural understanding through flow, uh, you know, flipped classrooms and all the other things you're seeing at this conference. So I'm saying digital games are natural in a fun way that we can use to learn math. Now, if you're interested in learning more about this, there's a social network, edweb.net. I don't know if any of you are a part of this. It's not just games. It's everything in education from around the world. Teachers that are interested in this can become part of the social network. The great thing is the social network has awesome authors being in there, webinars, uh, things to learn. You can share and collaborate. It's a database like of 100 games you can use right now. Um, and it's just a great network of professionals like you trying to do what's best for their students. And I do one in cognitive science. I follow them as well. Um, so thank you for listening to my presentation. You're all winners for being here tonight. And say it with me. Let the games begin. Let the games begin. Two, two shout-outs before we...
we end. The first shout out is to folks who helped put this together. Before you arrived and before 6 o'clock, I had help from Bruce Yoshiwara and Rob Eady. Is he here? And then, of course, Dan Petrak, who manned the camera, and Mary Beth, who manned the laptop.